their father. Absolutely. And uh, we've got all the lines lit up. Caller, you are on the air. Hi. Uh, my name is Mr. World, and uh, I'm calling because uh, I was divorced from my wife in 1999 when she's my ex-wife. And at during the time when we were divorced, I was on disability, and they're telling me I owe sixty-seven thousand dollars in back child support. That's in Cook thing. County? Yes. All right. So you were disabled at the time of the divorce. Yes, I was. How long ago were you divorced? Do you know? Uh, in nineteen ninety-nine. Wow. And when did you find out about the arrears? Uh, about. A month and a half ago. Okay. Well, uh, you definitely should seek legal counsel on that issue. I know there are a couple issues popped up in my mind uh, regarding uh, that issue. What do you think, Art? Well, um, first of all, you have to stop the bleeding from this. You have to have an order that stops you from being required to pay so much child support if you don't have the income to support it. Then you have to look back to see if there was something that that could have been done, that should have been done, that might be done now even, to try to go back and challenge that. It might be a tough case, but you really have to have someone look at it before we make a decision as to whether you have a case to uh, to compromise that amount or to, to eliminate it. And it's unfortunate, but sometimes fraud does occur in the court system. Sure. I mean, I know nothing about this case, but uh, if, you know, the court system is adversarial in nature and people mm -hmm. go in there with their interests in mind and if the other side is not there to give their side of the story, you know, somebody hypothetically, hypothetically could go into court and say, oh, my husband uh, makes, you know, five, six thousand dollars a week. He can afford to pay, you know, eight hundred, a thousand dollars a week uh, in support. And that might not be the, the case, but the other party is there uh, to defend himself and um, you know, give his side of the story. And there are legal remedies. Uh, for vacating judgments that are acquired by fraud, but there are uh, very stringent uh, guidelines and time limitations and things like that. Certainly, you really have to do something immediately if you just found out about this. This is the time to do it, not not another year from now or a few months from now. And I also would caution other uh, fathers who um, have lost their jobs or have had a reduction in their uh, income that they should immediately seek a modification of child support. If That's a very good point yes. because we're uh, going through a very tough economy right now and a lot of people are losing hours or on their job or losing their jobs altogether. And the court cannot reduce your child support for you. That's right. Uh, you need to be the one to file a motion to reduce your, or suspend your child support obligation. I know a lot of uh, cases involve uh, a child support payor being brought into court to face contempt proceedings for failure to pay child support and they lost their ability to pay child support months ago yes but they never got into court uh, to tell the judge that and they face uh, you know their liberty at risk with those situations next caller you are on the air uh, yes good evening gentlemen how are you doing fine thank you what's your Great. name I was just listening to one of your callers earlier and uh, he just made me think what for First of all, we know there's a wonderful things that do go on on this earth. We know that men do take care of their family, and some men take care of their family solely by themselves. So I just made me think, I hope this is not a silly question, but can a man collect child support? I hope that's not a real silly question, but it just made me think when I heard that gentleman said that he was taking care of the kids and the wife left. So right. I just want to know, did a man can? And we know a woman can file for child support, but can a man file well, child support? That's a good Let question. me get out the air and so I can hear well, you. Well, thank you very much. Does uh, the child support statute, I think it's 505 of the mm -hmm. of the act, does it reference the gender of the parent at all? No, it doesn't. The, the custodial parent should get child support from the non-custodial parent. So if a father has custody of his children, he, he should get child support from the mother. Uh, the child deserves the support by both of his parents or her parents and the um it, it uh it's it's something that that we don't always have to we don't we don't always consider this because it seems that uh there's still a uh, uh bias in our culture where we think that the mother's going to have custody and the father's going to support the family but very often we've been successful in getting custody for the fathers and in most of those cases we're able to get 
the mother to pay child support. The only time she wouldn't have to pay child support is if there was a great disparity in their income or if she didn't have any income at all. But definitely, if you have custody of your child, you should be looking at the mother to help support that child. And thank you for the call. Uh, next caller, you are on the air. Yes, good afternoon. Hi there. Um, my question, well, it's kind of it's a question and a comment, and um, you can just give me your thoughts and an answer on it the best you can do. But I, I want to ask, how did we get to the point where the court seemed to be so one-sided, leaning toward women and not saying that all women? You know, I'm not saying that, you know, they're out to get money and different things like that, but how mm -hmm. did we get to the point where it seems to be so one-sided and the courts tend to try to ignore you know, like uh, some of the men's opinions. And a uh, second thing that I want to say is, um, you know, is it any way that we can uh, try to bring attention to the fact that the courts go after money first instead of trying to have some type of mediation where you can sit down with the parties first instead of just trying to go after the financial situation instead of, you know, thinking about the, uh, the uh, you know, personal side of it. Because, that's the, you know, they say that the most important thing is the uh, child you know, you need to sit down with the people and have them have an understanding before you can talk about money. To yeah, I, I understand your frustration uh, with uh, the system, and I, I hear that mm -hmm. frustration a lot um, from people. It, it seems like there's this lingering gender bias in our court system. Uh, it's, uh, society has moved on beyond, uh, you know, gender stereotypes, you know, uh, but uh, the the court system sometimes seems to be lagging a couple of decades behind in uh, you know strict uh, gender roles in, in in the family. I agree, and I think that uh, you know that you said, "How did we get to this point?" The caller asked, "How did we get to this point?" Actually, we've been at this point for for probably about a hundred years, and we're getting away from the point. I think partially due to the sorts of efforts that Mr. Leving has has made. I think he single-handedly has started this uh, whole idea about fathers' rights and. It actually is taking hold, not only in, in Cook County and in Chicago, but throughout the country. I've noticed in my travels that uh, people are much less likely to assume that the mother has to have custody. And if uh, callers want to call in and leave their name, address, and uh, phone number, uh, you can get a copy of uh, Jeff's. It was truly a, a groundbreaking uh, book, uh, Father's Rights. And I... I've uh, read the book a um, couple times, and I know it talks about the lingering gender bias in our court system and what he has done uh, to combat it. Well, callers, I want to thank you uh, for calling in with your questions and comments. I see that we've got about 30 seconds left in the show. And, um, Art, I want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure, Tom. And uh, helping to answer questions and, and tell our viewing audience more about the, the court system that you work in mm -hmm. every day. Uh, whenever we have the show, uh, the lines just light up. Uh, there's such an interest out there mm -hmm. in in uh, family law and the rights of parents and, and children's issues. And we thank you for your concern. And Jeff will be back next week, uh, Thursday night at uh, 8 o'clock. So everybody have a good night and talk to you later.